Okay, what we have here is a worked example for a vector, vector geometry problem. Um, so this is a fairly typical kind of problem. What, uh, let's have a look. Um, so here we've got this uh, sort of triangle and this extended base. Now, the original problem is just the black lines I've drawn in there. The, I've added the red, obviously, and also this grey line. That's really for part B. And... Um, so what was it telling us? So uh, it's saying that O, P and P, Q are both vector A. Uh, o, M and M, R are B. So O, M is B direction and M, R is B. And also the point T is on the line P, R such that P, T to T, R equals 1 to 2. So I've put the ratios in there, 1 to two uh, I was using that, that little bit of notation um so um <clears throat> that's it and the first part of the question is asking us to find p t in terms of a and b <clears throat> right okay sort of just a quick recap a and b are obviously vector um uh, quantities so the the uh, this is some unknown vector vector a uh, we don't know what numbers there it might be two along and five up or or, or whatever or, and the same with b we, we we don't know what the numbers are but it doesn't matter because we are being asked to find pt in terms of a and b okay <clears throat> so um let's have a look so there we are part uh part a now um what I prefer to do with these, as I've said in other videos, is to work with this line segment format um, and to in order to work out what we need to know, in this case, PT. Uh, now, I find this quite easy to do. And then once we know all the bits of the all the, 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 the algebraic values or the numeric values, if we're given that, of the line segments, um, then we can actually apply those um, and see what we mean in a minute okay so here we've got pt right well now pt is this bit here so going from p to t so the way we can look at this is to say that uh well if we only get from p to t then we don't actually know what pt is but if we were to travel imagine uh, we're going to travel from p to t but we're going to do it down routes which we we either know the values numerically or algebraically um, or we can find them out <clears throat> and in fact we have therefore found um, uh, uh, the value or an expression for pt so we could actually go p o o m m t all right so that is going to be the um the 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 algebraic expression for pt uh, why is that true well um basically we know that if we go right round a, a shape uh, in one particular director direction and add up all those those vectors then it's going to come to zero because we're back to where we started um so the consequence of that therefore is that uh, um PT, which is kind of the negative TP, is going to be equal to the sum of that and that and that. If you're not convinced by that, just you know, stop and have a think about it for a moment. Right, so um, so we've got PT, therefore, equals PO plus OR plus RT. Now, I like this because we can, we, can, we can immediately see the correspondence between PT and this... Uh, uh, right hand side here because if we can imagine that uh, these two o's kind of cancel and so do these two r's leaving us with the p and the t from the outside so that's kind of quite a useful device so um right so what else do we know well we know that rt we don't actually know rt but we know there's two thirds of rp and we can find RP because um, by the same principle that if we from go to go from R to P, we could go from R to O, then O to P, and then we we know these, don't we? So, uh, so PT is therefore equal to PO plus OR plus two thirds of RO 
plus OP. Right, now we've got this in a form uh, we know all the component parts. Um, PO is actually um, the opposite of OP, so that's going to be minus A, that's the, the, uh, the negative. Uh, 2B, uh, OR is 2B, yeah, 2B. And then two thirds of RO minus 2B plus OP, which is A. Okay, so we now converted that into um, sort of vector, uh, algebraic vector form. And if we just simplify this together, our A's together and our B's together, then what we find is that PT is actually equal to minus third A plus two thirds B. So uh, that is part A. Now, um, that's a sort of fairly typical thing that we get from a, a part A of these questions. And to be honest, if if you only did the question in order to do the part A, it's kind of worthwhile, really, because these part A's, once you understand the principles of, of, of vector geometry, um, then the part A's are relatively straightforward. Anyway, as you get a bit more practice, you find that the part B's aren't too difficult either. So let's have a look at this particular part B. And now this is a quite a, a, a common form of question. Prove that M, T and Q are collinear. Um, so, um, right, so what we do, so we've got M, T and Q. So I've drawn this line in here, just, uh, and, it, and it certainly looks as if they're collinear. And basically that means they are they are all on the same line. M, T and Q, there we go. <clears throat> uh, now, uh, how do we know that they're collinear? Well, the the requirements for them being collinear are can be stated anyway as if this vector mt and tq share the same direction we might say that they're parallel but i suppose parallel means that they don't meet um but they share the same direction um and they share a point t then they will be on the same line okay so um so now how do we find that they are in the same direction? Well, if 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 uh, MT and TQ are scalar multiples of each other, then that means that they have the same direction. So let's go ahead and see if we can find, uh, first of all, MT. We go MT, right, we're using the same line segment format here uh, to go from MT, we go MOOP, MT, uh, PT, there we go, MT. T equals MO plus OP plus PT. And again, we see this cancellation idea cropping up. So we're ending up with uh, um, uh, these O's and P's dropping out there. So that's what MT equals. And, uh, well, we know all the bits of this, don't we? MO, uh, well, we can just reverse the sign and we get minus this B, MO minus B, uh, OP's a and this PT is what we've just calculated down here, um, minus third A plus two thirds B, which I'll just kind of switch around there. Uh, right, so then if we simplify that, we get this uh, expression here, two thirds A minus one third B. So that's MT. What about TQ? All right, so TQ, I don't know TQ, but TP is uh, TQ is equal to TP plus PQ. Right again, cancellation idea going on there. And and if we reverse the sign of TP, we're going to get minus PT, which we do know because we worked it out down here. So we've got that, and we've got PQ because we know that to be A. That's given in the question. Okay, so we can just sub in these all the algebraic expressions for for this part and for this part to give us this. Simplify that, gathering our A's and our B's together, we get that. And um, we can observe that actually this uh, is twice that. And therefore, in other words, TQ is equal to scalar two times mt so therefore they are scalar multiples of each other uh, so therefore tq and mt have the same direction 
and they share this point T. So therefore Q, T and M are collinear. Right, okay, so um, not too difficult, I don't think. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would kind of, um, uh, you know, suggest that you follow this idea of, you know, working these things through, you sort of identifying a vector by using the line segment format and breaking that down until we actually know all the constituent parts. And then we can substitute in our values or our al algebraic values and work that through. And that's what we've done in both those situations. And of course, recognizing the requirements for collinearity as well is, uh, is, is basically given as the clue that we need to find MT and TQ. So hopefully that has been... Uh, useful and thanks for listening.